In this section of the course, we're going to explore the wonderful world of Excel tables. Because if you've never come across Excel tables before, then you're going to find them extremely useful when it comes to analyzing data. Now, in this lesson, we're going to really get an understanding of what exactly an Excel table is and why they're so useful. So we're going to start here on this basic tables worksheet. And if you notice at the top here, I have a very simple data set. I just have some fruits listed and I have the total sales, let's say the total revenue for January, February, March. So effectively the first quarter. Now this data isn't in any kind of Excel table. Now you might be a little bit confused by that. And I think a lot of the confusion lies in the fact that Excel by its nature kind of has a table looking format. We have a grid structure, which could be mistaken for a table. But it's worth noting that there is a big difference between simply entering data into cells and actually formatting your data as an Excel table. Now, this table of data at the top here is not formatted as a table, whereas the one underneath, which pretty much looks exactly the same, is formatted as a table. So how can we tell the difference between these two? Well, this table up here, I've basically just typed in some text and some numbers into cells, and then I've manually formatted them. So I've literally selected each row and I've changed the formatting, the background fill manually, just to make it a little bit easier to read. Whereas with this table underneath, this is formatted as an Excel table. If I click inside the data set, notice that we get a table design contextual ribbon at the top here. And if I click on it, it opens up all of the options that I have when it comes to formatting and organizing my table. If I scroll back up and click inside this first data set, you can see that table design ribbon disappears, which means that this data is not in a table. Now in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a table and we're going to take a look at some of the various different ways that you can use a table. But I just want to illustrate what the difference is here. Now, most of the time when you're working in Excel and you have a data set, that data set doesn't remain static. And what I mean by that is usually we're always adding additional rows onto the bottom of our tables. For example, this data set could grow. Maybe I want to add a different fruit onto the bottom here. So let's say strawberry. Let's say the sales for January were, let's go for 500. For February, we'll say 400. And for March, we'll say 300. So I've managed to add that data onto the bottom, no problem. But if I had a chart attached to this data, the data wouldn't automatically update. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to insert a quick chart. So let's go to the insert tab and I'm going to insert a 2D column chart. So this is pretty much the same as the chart that we have below. Now, currently it's showing everything that I have in the table. If I was to add another row on the bottom here, so let's go for Kiwi and we'll say 400, 250, and let's go for 100. Notice that my chart doesn't update. You can see that Kiwi hasn't been added. You can see that Kiwi hasn't been automatically added to the chart. And when I click on the chart, you can see exactly the data that the chart is using. It's not including the Kiwi row. Now we could fix this. We could go in and we could drag this little blue handle down, which will then include it in the chart. And you can see the chart immediately updates to include Kiwi. But if you're doing this all the time, you don't want to have to keep going in and dragging this little handle down. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course and gain access to over 200 courses ad free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. It's also really easy to forget to do that. So let's take a look how a table behaves differently. If we scroll down, as I mentioned, this little data set is in a table and I've already added in my chart. So let's do the same thing. Let's add another item on the end. We're going to go for strawberry and press tab. As soon as I press tab, the chart starts to update. I can then add in my values. Let's go for 500, 400 and 300 and everything automatically updates.
And that is because tables have an auto expand capability. So if your data is in a table, as soon as you add more data onto the bottom, it's going to automatically expand to accommodate that new data, which means that if you have things like pivot tables or charts hanging off of this data using this data, they're going to automatically update. So it really is a great time saving hack. Let's take a look at one more example. I'm going to go across to the employees worksheet. And here we have a data set that is a little bit larger. We have employee IDs, employee names, we have the department that they're in, their job title, their salary, and their job rating out of five. Now, I've already put this data into a table. We can tell that because we have a table design ribbon. And another thing that happens when we turn a data set into a table is that we automatically get these filter drop downs at the top of each column. So if I wanted to just see all of the information for a specific department, I could go in, I could deselect everything apart from the department that I'm looking for, click on OK, and it's going to filter the data. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But just remember that when you create a table, you get these useful filter drop downs. Now, the chart that you can see on the right hand side, you can see that this is showing the average salary broken down by department. Now, this is actually a pivot chart. I've created a pivot table just below of the data above. Now, we haven't discussed pivot tables at all so far, but just really to illustrate the point that this also works if you've created a pivot table. If I were to add another employee onto the bottom here, not only is my pivot table down here going to update, my chart is also going to update. And that is because this data set is in a table. So I'm going to add on to the bottom here. Let's go for the next member of staff. This person is going to be, let's go for Carly Watson. She's going to work in sales. So keep your eye on the sales column in the chart. She is a sales associate and let's make her salary quite a bit larger than everything else. We're going to go for a hundred thousand. I'm going to give this person a job rating of five. Now you might be looking at this chart thinking, well, that hasn't actually updated. It looks exactly the same. Now that is because when we're dealing with a pivot table, and as I said, we have a pivot table that is feeding off of this table data. In order to get a pivot table to update, we need to right click and refresh it. So as soon as I do that, it pulls those new totals through and check out the sales column in the table. Now it's a lot bigger. Remember, these are just average sales by department. Now, none of this would be possible if our data wasn't in a table. So the important thing to take away from this lesson is always put your data into a table. It's going to make your life so much easier when it comes to updating that table and keeping all of your charts updated and refreshed with the latest information. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for Beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.